Despite the ongoing drama between CM Punk and the Elite, the Second City Saint reportedly pitched himself to be in the upcoming Blood and Guts match on Dynamite between the Blackpool Combat Club and the Elite. We'll reveal how close it actually came to happening. Speaking of CM Punk, he for the first time in his career defeated Samoa Joe last night on AEW Collision to advance to the finals of the Men's Own Heart Foundation Cup Tournament. Speaking of the tournament, he will face absolute Ricky Starks after Starks defeated Powerhouse Hobbs last night on Collision. Bullet Club Gold are the new number one contenders to the AEW Tag Team titles after defeating FTR. Battle of the Bouts is upcoming next week and we've got title matches announced for the show. Malachi Black has laid out the challenge for Andrade Al Idolo. Willow Nightingale was pulled from her match that was scheduled last night on AEW Collision. We'll let you know why. Could Chris Hero wrestle in AEW? Well, Tony Khan says he's chipping away at the former WWE superstar. Sonata recalls an interaction he had with CM Punk at Forbidden Door and MGF goes back and forth with Adam Cole on Twitter saying he's too sick to be participating in his tag team match next week. Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of All Elite Wrestling. Let's start off talking about this really interesting pitch that CM Punk made. Now, we don't know how jokingly or how serious it was, but CM Punk did pitch himself to be part of the Blood and Guts match coming up on Dynamite in a few weeks' time. CM Punk in Blood and Guts, it could could have happened. The Blood and Guts match ended up being uh, getting unfortunately hampered at AEW and New Japan's Forbidden Door pay-per-view. Brian Danielson broke his arm at the show and hasn't been backstage at an AEW show since, effectively removing him from the Blackpool Combat Club versus Elite match at Blood and Guts. However, according to reports from Fightful Select and Sean Ross Sapp, CM Punk offered to get involved in the match, according as mentioned to Fightful Select, Sean Ross Sapp reporting this and others. Now, Fightful Select are saying that their sources have confirmed Voices of Wrestling's report that Punk pitched himself as the fifth member of the Blackpool Combat Club's team. Whether seriously or not, or whether he actually expected the offer to be accepted, isn't known. He might have just said it in jest. Hey, I'll do it. We don't know how serious it was. He has expressed his desire to work with the elite in the past, but said that he's been told that it wasn't happening. So, again, we don't know if this was said in jest or not. Quote, neither team would want him, one source said to Fightful Select. When Fightful asked about the issues with the Blackpool Combat Club's John Moxley, Fightful are reporting that they were told that Moxley actually wasn't opposed to the idea. However, as of two weeks before the show, the partners were already determined. It's been heavily rumoured that the Elite's partner is going to be, of course, Kota Ibushi. Some rumours, suggestions and hints on Dynamite have suggested that Chris Jericho could be part of the Blackpool Combat Club's team heading into Blood and Guts. But what do you think? CM Punk in Blood and Guts? And is this an indication that Punk, again, is willing to put these issues to one side and wants to work with the Elite, wants to work with the Blackpool Combat Club and make the best of it for all Elite wrestling? What are your thoughts on this? Do you think it could have ever happened? Do you think it's a possibility in the future? Let me know your thoughts, as always, in the comment section below. Now, speaking of CM Punk, he's made history because for the first time in his professional wrestling career, he has defeated Samoa Joe in a match. Nearly 20 years after their acclaimed series of matches in Ring of Honor in 2004, Samoa Joe and CM Punk went head-to-head -head once again in the semi-finals of the 2023 Owen Hart Foundation Tournament. And unlike their previous encounters, the Second City Saint came out on top for the very first time in his career. With a massive match like this one as the main event, this week's AEW Collision had a big fight feel. The the Canadian crown was electric to see the Samoan submission machine and the voice of the voiceless lock up once more. But for the majority of the match, Joe dominated. Punk managed to get in plenty of offense, but his opponent had an answer for everything that was thrown at him. In the end, after being beaten and battered, Punk saw an opportunity and took it when he scored the victory with a roll up on Joe. After the bell rang, the two exhausted warriors were shocked by the outcome. After only seeing draws and losses in the record books, CM Punk finally defeated Samoa Joe in a one-on-one -on -one match. Following the match, it looked like the two would adhere to the code of honor, as that had been in the, the past with their Ring of Honor history, but Joe had other plans. He shook Punk's hand and then locked in the Kikina clutch, saying, I've always been better than you. Once Punk was knocked out, Joe grabbed the chair from the ringside area. 
but before any damage could be done, FTR made the save to protect their friends. Clearly, this chapter, this renewed chapter of the CM Punk Samojo rivalry is not over. However, before the story can continue, CM Punk has to face absolute Ricky Starks in the finals of the Owen Hart Cup tournament on next week's episode of Collision. What did you make of the match? What do you think of the storyline moving forward between Punk and Joan? When are we going to see the rematch at some point in the future? Now, speaking of CM Punk, I did just want to touch on this because it's quite interesting when it comes to, I think, the future of AW Collision. Now, much like it was initially billed, AW Collision heavily revolves around the ever-controversial CM Punk, we just spoke about him there, who has competed or appeared during every main event segment the show has aired up until this point. And while the same-day ratings for the weekly events were seemingly struggling following the first episode, it has since been noted that delayed viewership has given the show a substantial bump in all three of its initial episodes. Now, quite interestingly, over the last few days, Andrade Al-Elo took to Twitter to declare his pleasure in being a mainstay on the Saturday night show, remarking that the first three episodes have been spectacular and that he is happy to have internal competition against AEW's brands. Furthermore, after listing some competitors he's excited to face in the future, Andrade noted that he's excited about what the future holds for the brand. Quote, Thunder Rose's comeback will be great, Andrade said, teasing a partnership between him and his countrywoman on AEW television. He then added that not only would that be great, but so would maybe having our own championship that CM Punk never lost. That last line was, of course, in reference to the AEW World Championship, a title Punk won at AEW All Out 2022 before being forced to vacate it mere days later. Now, Punk did allude to still being in possession of the world title during his first appearance on Collision last month, carrying something of a velvet bag in the ring that many assumed was his championship bout. For now, Punk is yet to properly reclaim the AEW World Championship and is instead focused on his involvement in the Owen Hart Foundation Memorial Tournament. It's quite interesting to note, though, that Sean Ross Sap of Fightful Select did mention that Punk carrying that bag around with him and the 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 the, the line of having a of a, a replica bout that MGF currently holds, etc., etc., was all cleared with AEW management ahead of time, and it is going to be a long-term storyline. So how is that one going to play out? Let me know your thoughts about that. Certainly interesting, and maybe this is the first step in the direction of getting a hard brand split in the future with a separate world championship. Now, going back to the Owen Hart Foundation tournament, Ricky Starks will meet CM Punk in the final. As I mentioned, absolute Ricky Starks has advanced to the finals of the Owen Hart Foundation tournament after defeating his old friend, turned rival powerhouse Hobbs on AEW Collision. Of course, he will go on to face the winner of the main event of Collision last night, which of course was CM Punk after defeating Samoa Joe. But Stark's advancement wasn't really the only major development from his match with Hobbs, as it seems Hobbs may no longer be running with QTV. The final moments of the match saw QT Marshall potentially cost Hobbs his spot in the tournament. Afterwards, Hobbs turned on Marshall and attacked Aaron Solo. The women's side of the tournament is continuing to progress after Ruby Soho's bout with Britt Baker was delayed. There was another delay. We'll talk about that in just a second. But predictions in. Let me know your thoughts and predictions in the comment section below. Who wins the tournament next week in Calgary? Is it going to be CM Punk or is it going to be Ricky Starks? Who do you think is going to win and who do you think should win? Because there is a difference. Bullet Club Gold are now going to be looking for tag team gold. Jay White and Juice Robinson have become number one contenders for the AW World Tag Team Championships following an intense match with FTR on AW Collision. And the match is set for next week's AW Collision on TNT as well. After their match, White and Robinson confronted Dax Howard and Cash Wheeler backstage to set up the title match. Next week's championship match will also be a two out of three falls encounter. This will be White's first shot at AW Gold, aside from his participation in the Black. Jack Battle Royal at Double or Nothing, and it will also mark FTR's second defense of the Tag Team Championships since winning them from the guns in April. FTR's only title defense thus far was against Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett at the Double or Nothing pay-per-view. Previous AEW Tag Team Champions Austin and Colton Gunn recently joined forces of White and Robertson as part of Bullet Club Gold. The Guns have been appearing to help White against Ricky Stark since the start of June, and last week on Collision, the Guns were officially made a part of Bullet Club Gold. So could we see new champions next week? Either way, it's sure to be a fantastic match. Now, next week also, it's going to feature actually three hours of live television on Saturday. In addition to Collision, we're also getting Battle of the Bouts. And two championship matches have been set for AEW next week across Collision and Battle of the Bouts. As I mentioned, that first match is the AEW World Tag Team Championship match that's set to take place on AEW Collision next week. That two out of three falls is going to be taking place in the Calgary Saddle Dome in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Um, also announced for the big night in the Saddle Dome will be Battle of the Bouts. Battle of the Bouts is also taking place next week. And 
Christian Cage's own TNT champion Luchasaurus will put his TNT championship on the line against Sean Spears. Luchasaurus and Spears will actually take place, as I mentioned, on Battle of the Bouts, which takes place afterwards. As of right now, no other title matches have been announced for the show. Of course, when they are, we'll let you know in a future video. Malachi Black has issued a haunting challenge for Andrade Al Idolo. We spoke about Andrade early on. And after Julia Hart took on Bambi Hall and picked up the victory, the House of Black's leader Malachi Black appeared in a vignette with a message for Andrade Al Idolo, teasing a hard-hitting incoming feud between the pair after the House of Black stole Andrade's lucha mask. Black challenged Andrade to find out how great he can truly be without it. Black pointed out that Andrade's greatest success actually came after he took the mask off, not when he had it on, seemingly a reference to his time in NXT. Black saying that together they will cut the last vein that pumps blood into the heart of lies that Andrade has constructed around himself, helping him finally prove how great Black knows Andrade can be. In a backstage interview with Lexi Nair right after this, Andrade responded to the threatening message by noting that he would recapture his mask because it had deep significance for him, his culture and his business overall. Notably, Andrade Al Idolo appeared solo and still without the faction at Gobernable's members, seemingly signifying that he remains solo in this feud. So maybe we are going to be getting a Malachi Black versus Andrade Al Idolo match in the near future. Now, we spoke about the Owen Hart Foundation tournament on the men's side and the women's side as well. But Willow Nightingale was not and is not having a great week. At New Japan Strong Independence Day, the positive AW star lost her New Japan Strong Women's Championship to Stardom's Julia after a grueling match. And now she was unable to compete in her Owen Hart Foundation tournament semi-final match that was scheduled for last night's collision. A few hours before showtime, Tony Khan revealed on Twitter that Nightingale had not been cleared to compete against Ring of Honor Women's Champion Athena due to injury suffered this week in Japan. Instead, the bubbly brawler has an opportunity to get the green light from the AW medical team. The match has been moved to this coming Friday's edition of AW Rampage in a hope that she can be cleared in time. After the babe with the power faces off it with the fallen goddess in tournament action, the winner will advance to the finals to take on the winner of Ruby Soho, who defeated last year's tournament winner Dr. Britt Baker DMD on Dynamite, and Sky Blue, the up-and-coming star who defeated Anna Jay in, uh, two weeks ago in Chicago. However, if Nightingale is still not cleared by the rescheduled date, one would assume that Athena would likely get a bye to the finals, or possibly someone could sub in. We'll wait and see how things play out for these competitors later on in the week and of course we wish Willow Nightingale a speedy recovery fingers crossed she can participate in the tournament. Chris Hero in AEW now he is already working with the promotion working backstage in a producer slash coach role for AEW and Ring of Honor and despite remaining inactive in recent years wrestling veteran Chris Hero has previously stated that his in-ring career as a pro wrestler is not yet over. While he currently acts in several backstage roles in both West Coast Pro Wrestling and AEW slash Ring of Honor, the door remains open for Hero to make a return to action. And if Tony Khan can help it, it will take place in All Elite Wrestling. Tony Khan was in an engaging mood after the episode of Rampage on Friday when a fan asked him to bring in Chris Hero for the upcoming Blood and Guts match on July 17. He responded by echoing the, comment, uh, the commenter's sentiment. Quote, I'm chipping away on him, Khan replied, prompting many fans to believe a Chris Hero debut in AEW is possible. Khan later followed up on his comment, assuring fans that Hero is still far from agreeing to an in-ring appearance. Quote, I can't say for sure if I'll ever get him, Khan responded on Twitter to wrestling editorialist Joseph Monticello, before adding, but I'll keep chipping away at him on a weekly basis and hopefully someday he'll crack. Either way, I love working with him. Hero last competed in WWE under the ring name Cassius Ono before getting released by the company in 2020. However, despite spending ample time with the McMahon-led company, Hero is best known for being a legendary competitor on the North American independent scene throughout the 2000s and 2010s. If he does cross over from being a backstage hand into being an in-ring competitor, he will join many of his peers from that era as members of AEW's active roster. So are we ever going to see Chris Hero inside of an AEW ring? Well, Tony Khan says he's trying. A quite interesting story here regarding New Japan's uh, IWGP World Heavyweight Champion Sonata and an interaction he had with CM Punk at Forbidden Door. Of course, Forbidden Door was undoubtedly one of the biggest pro wrestling events of the summer. The cross-promotional event featured several key matches, both the AEW and IWGP World Heavyweight Championships being uh, on the card, although it was not the main event, their title defenses. Sonata, the reigning IWGP champion, spoke about his experience at Forbidden Door in a recent interview with New Japan's website, recalling a conversation he had backstage with CM Punk at the event. Sonata, a long-time mid-carder in New Japan, finally captured the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship from Kazuchika Okada earlier this year and has been a prideful champion for the company ever since. 
Quote, when I was over with AEW, I felt how important that IWGP label is to not record. I got to chat with CM Punk, and he was like, that bout is the coolest. Punk, who wrestled New Japan veteran Satoshi Kojima on the show, reminded Sonata just how world-renowned the IWGP title truly is. For someone like CM Punk to know who you are and what you're doing, that speaks to how widely the IWGP champion is known, Sonata remarked. The IWGP World Heavyweight Champion also briefly touched on his bout against Jungle Boy Jack Perry, a match he won in just 10 minutes in the fourth match of the card. It was my first time in AEW, Sonata reminded. The most important thing was being able to show who I am in that environment, in that atmosphere, where you are on the card, that's important, sure, but it was my job to show who Sonata was within that environment. Following his successful title defense at Forbidden Door, Sonata now looks forward to the G1 Climax, where he is a headliner of this year's A Block. So certainly interesting to hear his interactions with CM Punk and other AEW stars. Finally, this budding friendship between MGF and Adam Cole continues, but MGF nearly pulled out of an upcoming important match. According to the old saying, nothing in this world can be certain except death and taxes. Well, for AW fans, you can also add that it's pretty certain that Maxwell Jacob Friedman doesn't want to wrestle on the promotion's weekly programming if he doesn't have to. However, it's a little hard to avoid being in in-ring action when the AW World Champion is currently taking part in the Blind Eliminator Tag Team Tournament. And despite his best efforts, his tournament partner slash former foe Adam Cole is there to keep him on the street and narrow. In an effort to get out of his match against Brian Cage and Big Bill on AEW Dynamite, MJF took to Twitter to say that he had come down with an undisclosed illness that would keep him from competing on Wednesday. Seeing through the ruse, Cole called out Friedman on his excuses. In response, the Long Island native said, guess it's only cool when you get to do it. MGF is referencing the sickness that caused Cole to miss his match against filthy Tom Lawler at the Forbidden Door pay-per-view. It's also the same ailment that affected Britt Baker and caused her to miss her scheduled Own Heart Foundation tournament match against Ruby Soho. While Baker was able to reschedule her match, we have yet to see the former NXT champion take on the leader of Team Filthy. In the end, though, MGF has agreed to show up for his scheduled match, but this likely won't be the last time that the divisive champion tries to weasel his way out of stepping inside the squared circle. But there you go, guys. This latest AEW news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe bottom right hand corner. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video or click the bottom there to subscribe or the bottom right hand corner. Thank you very much and I'll speak to you again very soon.